Incidence of testicular cancer is highest in North Europeans and least in Asians and Africans. Cryptorchidism or failure of descent of testes into the scrotal sac is also a risk factor for the disease. In this condition, testes may lie either in the abdomen or in the inguinal canal, as you can see in the figure. Various syndromes such as Down syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome and testicular dysgenesis syndrome may also be a risk factor for the disease. Previous history of cancer in opposite testes, testicular biopsy, testicular atrophy or impaired fertility may also increase the risk of testicular cancer. Previous history of testicular cancer in family may also increase the risk in other family members. So these all were the risk factors for testicular Most commonly, testicular cancer presents in the form of a painless swelling, but sometimes torsion may cause severe pain. In some cases, pressure-like sensation or heaviness may be present in the testes. Very rarely, back pain, breathlessness or headache may be present due to the spread of the cancer to bones, lungs or brain. If anyone comes with a testicular mass, is it always testicular cancer only? No, not necessarily. Conditions other than testicular cancer may also present similarly. For this, we have to further investigate the patient. The next step is testicular ultrasound. It helps us to differentiate whether the mass is intratesticular or extratesticular, that is, whether it is inside or outside the testes. Then we have to see whether it is solid or cystic. A solid intratesticular mass goes in the favor of testicular cancer. The next step is to do blood tests to check for tumor markers. Before discussing the tumor markers in detail, we will first discuss the subtypes of testicular cancer. Testicular tumors may be broadly divided into seminomas or non-seminomas. The non-seminomatous germ cell tumors may be further divided into embryonal carcinoma, endodermal sinus or yolk sac tumor, choriocarcinoma or teratoma. Now, let's discuss the tumor markers for testicular germ cell tumors according to the subtypes. First, we will discuss about seminoma. In seminoma, LDH is the most commonly elevated tumor marker and beta-HCG may be elevated in some cases. Next comes choriocarcinoma, in which beta-HCG is significantly elevated and LDH may be elevated in some cases. In endodermal sinus or yolk sac tumors, AFP is significantly elevated and LDH may be elevated in some cases. And in embryonal carcinomas, all the three that is AFP, beta HCG and LDH may be elevated. So after doing testicular ultrasound and tumor markers, the next step is systemic imaging. This helps us to diagnose the spread of disease to other parts of the body. For systemic imaging, we require the CT scan of abdomen, pelvis and thorax. Very rarely, we may require MRI brain or bone scan to look for the spread of the disease to brain or bones. So after doing testicular ultrasound, tumor markers and systemic imaging, we are very close to the diagnosis. But to be 100% sure, we require a tissue histopathology. So for that, we do high inguinal orchidectomy, in which the involved testis is removed. This procedure is both diagnostic as well as therapeutic because it provides tissue for histopathological diagnosis as well as it removes the involved testes. A pathology report after high inguinal orchidectomy confirms the diagnosis of germ cell tumor. It also tells us whether it is a seminoma or a non-seminoma or whether it is a mixed germ cell tumor having components of both. It also tells us about the subtype of non-seminoma that is whether it is embryonal carcinoma, endodermal sinus or yolk sac tumor, choriocarcinoma or teratoma. As you previously told, even the tumor markers could help to differentiate the various subtypes of germ cell tumors. The tumor markers may not be elevated in all the cases, and even if they are elevated, they are highly overlapping in different subtypes. So, 100% diagnosis is rarely possible with just the tumor markers. Therefore, for the confirmation of diagnosis of testicular germ cell tumor, we require both, that is, histopathology as well as tumor markers. Rarely, it is possible that histopathology is suggestive of seminoma but serum tumor markers show AFP elevation. Such cases are diagnosed and treated as a non-seminoma. So, always remember that elevation of AFP strictly goes in the favor of non-seminoma even if the histopathological diagnosis is suggestive of a seminoma. Once the diagnosis of testicular germ cell tumor is confirmed, 
the next step is staging and the risk stratification of the disease testis is the rounded structure that produces sperm and testosterone it lies in a pouch called scrotum and it is lined by epididymis the duct joining the testis is called as vas deferens in front of the testis lies the penis through which urethra passes it is connected superiorly to the urinary bladder and helps in passing the urine if we look at the testis in detail it is lined by an inner layer that is called as tunica albuginea and an outer one called as tunica vaginalis at the upper part is epididymis which joins the vas deferens superiorly this covering outside the testis is called as spermatic cord it is composed of three layers internal and external spermatic fascia and cremasteric muscle and this outermost pouch like covering that holds both the testes is called as scrotum now we come to the staging for testicular tumors it can be divided into three stages stage 1 includes patients with the disease limited to the testes it may be t1 to t4 depending upon the extent of the testicular involvement as we have discussed previously in this stage the disease has not spread outside the testes that is it is n0 and m0 also the serum tumor markers are normal that is s0 rarely the tumor markers may be elevated in stage 1 when it is called as stage 1s so stage 1 is the disease which is limited to the testes without any spread elsewhere with serum tumor markers normal except in 1s stage 2 includes patients with the disease limited to the testes and the regional lymph nodes but there is no spread of the disease to the non regional lymph nodes or any other organs the markers may be s0 or s1 as you can see in the figure stage 2 has the disease limited to the testes and the regional or the retroperitoneal lymph nodes without any spread of the disease elsewhere the markers may be normal or they might be elevated that is s0 or s1 it may be stage 2a 2b or 2c depending upon whether the lymph nodes are n1 n2 or n3 respectively according to the size and number of lymph nodes stage 3 includes patients with the disease spread to the non regional lymph nodes or other organs that is m1a or m1b or those patients who have markers highly elevated that is s2 or s3 for example mediastinal lymph node involvement or supraclavicular lymph node involvement or involvement of inguinal lymph nodes stage 3 also includes patients with spread to the lungs or pulmonary metastasis spread to the liver or spread to brain or bones as diagnosed on mri brain or bone scan also regional or retroperitoneal lymph node involvement with markers highly elevated that is in s2 or s3 range also comes under stage 3 so with this we finish the staging for testicular cancers the treatment for testicular cancers depends on whether it is a seminoma or a non seminoma first we will discuss the treatment for seminoma the treatment options for stage 1 seminoma are surveillance radiation therapy or chemotherapy surveillance is usually preferred from t1 to t3 disease the final decision is taken by the oncologist after assessing the patient's condition and discussing all the treatment options with the patient for stage 2 seminoma the treatment depends on whether it is stage 2a 2b or 2c For stage 2a the treatment options are radiotherapy or chemotherapy For stage 2b also chemotherapy and radiotherapy are the treatment options but chemotherapy is preferred over radiotherapy in most of the cases and for stage 2c chemotherapy is the treatment of choice For stage 3 disease also chemotherapy is the treatment of choice So these were the treatment options for seminomatous germ cell tumors but the final decision is taken by the oncologist after assessing the condition of the patient and discussing with the patient the toxicities with various treatment after i received chemotherapy for seminoma doctor did the surgery he told me i had some residual disease after chemotherapy yes in some cases of seminoma residual disease may be present even after chemotherapy in such cases surgery may be required depending upon the scan findings and if viable tissue is found after surgery further chemotherapy may be given yes in some cases of seminoma residual disease may be present even after chemotherapy in such cases surgery may be required depending upon the scan findings and if viable tissue is found after surgery further chemotherapy may be given we come to the treatment for non seminomatous germ cell tumors the treatment options for stage 1 non seminoma are surveillance surgery or chemotherapy 
Surveillance is usually preferred in T1 disease. The surgery that is done for non-seminomatous germ cell tumors is called as retroperitoneal lymph node dissection or RPLND. In this, the retroperitoneal lymph nodes are removed. Treatment for stage 2 non-seminomas depends on whether the markers are S0 or S1, that is whether they are normal or elevated. If the markers are elevated, then chemotherapy is the treatment of choice. For stage 2 disease with normal markers, the treatment depends on whether it is stage 2A, 2B or 2C. For stage 2A disease, the treatment options are surgery or chemotherapy. For stage 2B disease also, the treatment options are the same, but chemotherapy is preferred over surgery. And for stage 2C disease, chemotherapy is the treatment of choice. For stage 3 disease also, chemotherapy is the treatment of choice. So, these were the treatment options for non seminomatous germ cell tumors. Again, always remember that of all the treatment options, the final decision is taken by the oncologist after assessing the condition of the patient and discussing the various treatment options with the patient. After my surgery for non seminoma, I was given chemotherapy also. In some cases, after surgery, chemotherapy may be required depending upon the stage of the disease.